back, and I'm going to warn you right now, it gets loud. The moment I start, it's like everything gets loud around me. So we're back on the last one on our show. We're doing a special edition uh, interview here uh, with Anna Kate. Now, Anna just got done speaking at the Reawaken America Tour. This is like my second time being uh, with Clay Clark on these events. It's kind of wild. 60 speakers <laughs> and all that activity. But some people really stand out. And you stood out to me for a couple of reasons. And uh, so, you know, you, you had that you have a pre you have an unusual combination of uh, Russian, Jewish, Russian, Jewish atheist, background, liberal. you know, from um, Survivor doing an episode yeah. there and doing professional poker, Project Veritas, poker playing. Yeah. But it was the Project Veritas of all subjects I want to talk about right now. You decided at some point that you were going to get involved with being a. Uh, front lines engaged in going into the system like a lot of people are watching the world you decided to go into it tell me about and tell the audience about your project veritas experience sure so back in 2015 is when i filmed survivor i got back home from survivor i didn't know the lord i was an atheist the lord cleansed me of my addiction to poker and survivor and i had a passion for politics i started looking into it went down the rabbit hole you know, didn't see, didn't know the Lord yet, but I wanted to get involved because I saw President, well, candidate Trump go down the escalator. So I thought he's telling truth. He's talking about the border. He's talking about child trafficking. He's talking about all these issues that we have in this country and Marxism. And I was born in Russia. You know, I came here when I was four with my family. So I thought I want to get involved. So my name kind of got around because I, I was the only one that endorsed candidate Trump from reality television. So the media wrote hit pieces. I got a phone call from James O'Keefe and he said, hey, you would be great for undercover. Would you want to infiltrate and help infiltrate communists? I said, I am in. So I infiltrated um, DC, was called hashtag deep state exposed in 2019, 2018. And we got a communist fire from the Department of State. And I infiltrated Andrew Gillum's campaign, who was running against um, Ron DeSantis for governor. So helped our governor get elected. I infiltrated a ton of Democratic campaigns. The most memorable to me was DSA which you know, Democratic Socialists of America, they're actually communists. So in these meetings, they sit there and they're like, I'm a Trotskyist, I'm a Leninist, I'm a Stalinist. And I'm looking at them face to face saying, like thinking in my head, because I can't blow my cover. So I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like I grew up knowing that Stalinism, Leninism is evil, the perils of Marxism, the perils of communism. And I thought, what in the world is wrong with you? But, but I want to tell you this though, it was yeah. the easiest job in that, you're going to laugh at this, it was so easy to infiltrate. I didn't wear any makeup, no hair, and I didn't wear deodorant. And you <laughs> could fit kidding. in with which crowd? The communists. The communists. The oh. DSA, Democratic. So they, you know, they all have green hair, purple hair. I still stuck out like a sore thumb, but no deodorant. I'm like t-shirt, baggy <laughs> pants. Very European. <laughs> don't brush my teeth. It's like Survivor. Don't brush my teeth. <laughs> you know. Well, so, but I'm curious about this thing. Most people don't know this, that uh, this, uh, Governor DeSantis won by like 30,000 votes. He did. And considering what a powerful okay. governor he is and considering how California is, uh, a, is a disaster, mm -hmm. imagine if uh, Andrew, what was his name, Andrew Gillum? Andrew Gillum. Imagine if this other Soros-backed mm -hmm. candidate was... You, what I'm saying is Florida would be like California. That's right. It would be lockdowns. It would be masked. The economy of America would be wrecked. Yeah. It would be a misery index. It would just be Texas all by itself against the country. 30,000 votes. That's and I believe it was Rush Limbaugh yeah. actually interviewing DeSantis. That was a critical factor because you know, from, from uh, the national audience of 20 million people, mm -hmm. trust me, there was a couple of million people in Florida that listened to that and said, Oh, this guy sounds okay. Yeah, thank God, because at that time I was living in New York City, in New York. And I lived in New York, grew up in New York my whole life. And seeing what happened with COVID and all the whole shutdown, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm, I've been actually praying to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, take me out of New York. And the moment he told me, I, you're leaving New York within a year, and I moved to Florida, I'm thinking, thank you, Jesus, because you're right. That's what they want to do to every single state. What people don't understand, with the 30,000 difference, the vote difference, it doesn't make any sense because almost the entire state of Florida is conservative because the re, they, these people are coming and escaping Latin America, South America. So they are escaping Cuba and Argentina. They're all anti-communist, like myself. I'm an anti-communist. I came out of communist Russia. I was born in the Soviet Union, you know, before it, before it collapsed, which actually never really 
actually collapse because they still have a lot of the same implementation, same policies, you know, same suppression of speech, same political, you know, kind of jargon, call something different. But anyway, you might do it. But although, you know, Putin does some good things, there's some a lot of communist stuff still left there. So they want to, you're right, they want to turn this whole country into a communist hellhole. And we are fighting back. We all have a job to do. Now, I'm, I'm a little yeah. bit intrigued about when you talk about infiltrating. Yeah. I don't know if it's like the FBI. FBI says that they can't reveal anything about mm -hmm. anyone because it would expose their um, sources and processes. But like give somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about an idea of what you're talking about. What do you do? You just go to the meetings? Sure. Yeah, so what we do is, well, you first want to investigate. I can't give away all the tactics, but I'll say this. You first want to figure out, okay, who is your target? Now, how do you fit in? Um, do you want to, you know, bump into them in the coffee shop? You know, I can't I can't give away too much because they were still kind of doing well, I know, I know. I, know. That's why but, I'm, but, I probably shouldn't do this live, but, you know, this is what yeah. I'm thinking live. So I, this is how I live. I yeah, stream of consciousness. I'm curious. No, it's a great question. Because people, because somebody out there could be just like you. Yeah. And they could be going, I agree. I'm listening to Lance. I want to do it. Hey, listen, they might get in touch with you. How would they get in touch with you, by the way? If somebody you, out there wants to say, I, you're inspiring me. What do I do? Sure. Well, here's that's great. So you can email me, kate.anna at yahoo.com. K-H-A-I-T dot Anna at yahoo.com if you want more information. What I recommend is use a cell phone, right? You can use a cell phone, but at the same time, if you want to go, on, that's that's if you you know are in a situation where you want to get it on video real quick. But if you go undercover, you don't need to be in Project Veritas to work undercover. You can go do your own story. Let's say there's a local senator that you think is just not up, not up to any good. Well, you can go ask them. You're allowed to. You actually have to research. I'll give you this tip as well. There are 10 states in this country that are called a one-party consent state. We want to follow the law. In Project Veritas, everything we did was by the books. Everything. Yeah, because, uh, because uh, James had 13 lawsuits at any one time because he's so effective. They were suing him on everything. Exactly. And so we ha we follow the law. Then another thing is as well, if someone ever tells you, this is a tip if you go undercover and they're, they know something is up, you know, let's say you have an undercover camera, undercover microphone, whatever you have in your pocket. Uh, you also want to have a backup cell phone just in case collecting audio in case your camera malfunctions. It's just a friendly little tip. So thank God I always had two, two backup sources. But when you go undercover and let's say someone picks up that you know, Lance is undercover. That's not Lance. He's got, you know, he's got green hair. It's not him. Well, well, this is him in, in undercover. So what you do is when they tell you, you have to leave the premises by law. If it is private property, you do not argue. You don't say you just leave and walk away. Otherwise you will be, uh, you'll have a misdemeanor of trespassing. Don't go anywhere. You're going to miss it. The whole podcast is over on lancebonnell.com forward slash podcast. This is just an excerpt. Go watch the full thing. Click the link in the description. It'll take you right there.